just about a week ago, I published episode 5 in my series on drawing tablet pressure. The goal of that series was to get a common understanding, a common vocabulary, so we could talk about pressure as it relates to drawing tablets, and now we can put that knowledge to use. Because in this video, I'm going to analyze the pressure range for many drawing tablet pens. Now I have over 70 drawing tablets and I have even more pens. I selected 53 of these pens to understand their pressure response. And that means understanding their pressure range, focusing on their maximum pressure. This is an upgraded version of my pressure measuring setup. The improvement here is the addition of a lever. The lever has a 3D printed attachment to hold the pen at a constant tilt. And I place weights on this lever to ensure that there is a constant amount of force being applied to the pen. This makes it much more reliable and consistent than using my hand. Now, by the way, to be honest, this picture is a little simplified. I'm not actually showing you all the little details like all the cables I use or all the weights that are on the lever. A few things you need to understand before I start showing you the data. First, I will admit, my apparatus for testing and methodology is primitive. Second, I only measured the pressure response for each pen only once. Third, I'm going to show you some graphs and in those graphs, you might notice some abrupt changes in pressure response. Sometimes I have to reposition the equipment and this can cause kind of little jumps in the pressure response. But even with that, you will see that the overall pressure response is still maintained. Fourth, I accounted for pen tilt. With this setup, the tilt of the pen will vary from five to zero degrees away from vertical. Tilt is important to keep in mind. When a pen is vertical, it's the most sensitive to pressure. But normally, of course, we're holding our pens at sort of a 45 degree angle. Fifth, I want to be clear about these curves and what they can tell you about initial activation force, the IAF. Now, I am not good at measuring the initial activation force. And so I'm not even trying to be very precise about IAF in my pressure measurements. So you might see a little bit of weirdness near that predicted and you might see some other artifacts and those might be caused actually by the pens themselves. So in this video, don't focus on the IAF. What you should focus on is the overall curve shape and the maximum pressure. Here are all 53 pens and the pressure response plots for each one of them. Clearly, one of these pens is an outlier. Its maximum pressure is somewhere beyond 3,500 gram force. And I didn't even try measuring its full max pressure because it was on the verge of breaking my pressure testing equipment. So I'm going to have to exclude that one outlier. Let's take a look at the outlier. It's actually one of the Wacom Pro Pen 2 models. While we're looking at these pens, there's some things I want to point out about how I do my measurements. First, you can see each line represents one pen. You can see the brand of the pen. In this case, they're all Wacom. You can see the model number of the pen, which is KP504E. And then you see these codes, WA001, WA002, so on, so forth. These are internal inventory tracking identification numbers that I use. WA means Wacom. And then the remaining number I just incrementally assign as I get a new pen. You can see here that the red line is the inventory number WA004. So that's the pen I'm going to be excluding from all further graphs. And then for each pen, you see the date where I took the measurements. And then finally, you see N equals some number. That N is the number of measurements, the number of points that make up that curve. Sometimes I take not so many, maybe 15 measurements. Sometimes I take a lot, like 60. Now let's get back to the pens, and I've removed that outlier. Now what I'd like to do when I show you any specific pen is to compare it to the overall population of pens. If I showed you all 52 all the time, it would be a little difficult to see. So instead, I'm going to draw a lower bound and an upper bound curve. And this represents the pressure response envelope. All the pens I'm going to show you will fall within this envelope. I've added these vertical lines labeled OK, Good, and Excellent. This indicates certain thresholds. So OK is at 200 gram force, Good is at 400 gram force, and Excellent is at 700 gram force. This will make it easier to understand how the pens compare to each other. We start with the Wacom Pro Pen 2. These pens have a very similar pressure response. They're very tightly grouped and they, and they all do a good job at maximum pressure. All the pens are right at the excellent line or above. This is the Wacom Grip Pen. This Grip Pen was previously the default pen that Wacom included with its professional tablets. 
It also has a very consistent and tight grouping. And notice all of them end at around a max pressure of 400 gram force. And this pen is actually where I get my baseline of good at being 400 gram force. Huyan's latest professional pens are the PW600 series. There's a very tight grouping and all the maximum pressures are well in the good range. I am super happy with this series of pen. This is Huyan's PW550 series. But with the exception of one outlier, all of them are good or excellent. The PW550 pen is backwards compatible with tablets that use the PW517 pen. And as you're going to see, if you're not satisfied with the PW517, you should consider getting the PW550 pen. Here's the PW517 series. This series has one outlier that's in the good, but the remaining four pens are really just hitting okay. Now, just because these pens are in this range doesn't mean they're bad pens. What it does mean is that you should carefully use pressure curves to maintain control over your strokes. And if you're not satisfied with this pen, consider getting the PW550 pen, which has a much wider pressure range. Let's compare the PW517 with the PW550 series. PW517 is in blue, PW550 is in red. I think you can clearly see the PW550 does very well in comparison to the PW517. I have one PW500 pen. This specific pen landed in the OK category. Now let's take a look at XP Pen's X3 Pro series. In my measurements, they seem to fall in two buckets. Some of the pens land squarely in the good category, and some squarely in the OK category. And now the XP Pen X3 Elite series. These X3 Elite pens were really good and almost touching the great category. This is an older XP Pen P05 pen, and all of these are consistent and in the OK category. Now we're going to take a look at several pens that share the same basic technology. The first is the Wacom 1 Gen 1 pen, CP913. So they're well grouped and they all fall squarely in the OK category. Their Wacom 1 Gen 2 pen, model number CP923, they also fall in the OK category, but you may notice their curves are shifted a little bit to the left. Let's compare them to see this more clearly. CP913 is in red, CP923 is in blue. You can see the older CP913 pen is a little bit better in terms of maximum pressure compared to CP923. The Samsung S Pen uses the same technology and they have a very similar behavior. They land right around the edge of OK. Let's compare the Samsung S Pen with the Wacom 1 Gen 1 Pen CP913. The S Pen is in green, CP913 is in red. While overall they are similar and there is some overlap, I think it's fair to say the CP913 has a better maximum pressure overall. This is one reason that many people, myself included, who have Samsung Galaxy Tab S series tablets, even though it came with an S Pen, often we prefer to use the Wacom 1 CP913 pen. The Wacom 2K pen, model number LP190K, comes with the one by Wacom series. And that is Wacom's cheapest and most beginner tablet. But surprisingly, the maximum pressure of these pens is actually hitting the good category. The Wacom 4K pen, LP1100K, these pens come with the Intuos tablets. They also all end up in the good category. I really want to compare the Wacom 4K pen to the new Wacom 1 Gen 2 pen. The tablets that the Gen 2 pen comes with are intended as an upgrade from the tablets that the Wacom 4K pen comes with. You can see that clearly from the model numbers. The Wacom 923 pen is in blue. Clearly, the 4K pen from the older tablet is better. And finally, I have the Sense Labs 3 button pen V1. Now, I only have one of these pens, but I wanted to show it to you. And we can see that this pen's max pressure is coming close to good. But since it is only one sample, it's too early for us to draw any conclusions. Okay, now a few takeaways. But first, some things to keep in mind. Remember, I tested specific pens that I own, and my sample size was small. Sometimes I had one pen, two or three, maybe five at most. And keep in mind, when I said something was okay or good or excellent, I was not talking about the IAF. I was talking about the maximum pressure or the pressure range. And honestly, I encourage you to test your own pens. Your results may be different. 
and I would enjoy seeing the numbers you collect. First, I found some pens were consistently excellent with regard to maximum pressure. They were all Wacom pens. There was another set of pens which were consistently good at maximum pressure. The Huion PW600 and the PW550 were consistently good. The PW550s were sometimes excellent. And then the Wacom Grip Pen, which remember, I used to define the category of good. And there were some other pens that I think we can think of as good as well. The X3 Pro Pen was sometimes good and sometimes it was okay. The X3 Elite Pen was in the okay category but verging on good. And finally, there were a bunch of pens in the okay category. The Wacom 1 Gen 1 and Gen 2 pens. There were those three pens that share the same basic technology. The Wacom 1 Gen 1 pen, the Wacom 1 Gen 2 pen, and the Samsung S pen. I found that the Gen 1 pen was the best in terms of maximum pressure and pressure range. And I did see that the PW517 pen and the Samsung S pen varied a lot. They danced around the OK boundary. So those are the pens I'd encourage you to use pressure curves with to control your strokes. Thanks for your time. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Yeah.